Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the UFC Saudi Arabia card. Um, we're going to be focusing completely on lineup construction, and most specifically, we're going to be focusing completely on just winning that hundred thousand um, in in the MMA throwdown. Um, as I went over on Thursday, I mean there there are plenty of good plays that you can identify. But trying to win the 100,000 is not just about finding the good plays. It's about using all these, all these tools at your disposal to try to strike that balance between um, playing lineups that you think have a chance to win and playing lineups that you think very few people are going to play. Um, because this, yeah, when you have 11 fights specifically, but even when you have 13, 14 fights in MMA, it really becomes a battle of, of avoiding dupes. Um, and it's difficult. I mean, it's difficult to have lineups that have a really good chance to win that not that many people are going to be playing. And that's just the way it is. So there's a little bit of funny business that you can do to try to get unique and hopefully stay within the bounds of, of reasonableness. Um, before we kind of get into that, we're we're running our initial five thousand lineup build with the projections that I've sort of settled on, and just to kind of go over them, like for now, I just want to just do a spot check, make sure this is kind of okay. Um, yeah, Sharon Magomedov is kind of top projection, but not that much higher than Fakhradinov or 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 Magomed with a huge inside the distance line. Um, Pavlovich feels a little low but he is only like about a two to one favorite so uh this this is what you're going to get for a median projection for somebody like him now again that's not the end of the story now this is uh an interesting one you have asperas hackbaras who's projecting as on a median basis almost the same as pavlovich um he is three thousand higher so that's not so you expect him to maybe be a little more, but Pavlovich has that huge inside the distance line, probably going to finish in the first round. I actually think that this is pretty reasonable. Uh, Whitaker, 70, that looks good. A little higher than Gastelum, even though he's 8,400. And definitely higher than Gaffra. Those five rounds are going to help. And you have Ali Skaroff, um, main event, underdog, about 66. Yeah, I think these are 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 somewhat reasonable, but again, when, when you're when you're doing MMA lineups, it's not just about the um, about the median. You know, it, it's it's what happens when these guys win, and, and that's that's why you sort of use the Sims you know, to 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 figure out how these guys are going to do on on the right part of the distribution curve. Okay, not just comparing medians to medians. Um. So we're going to let this run for a minute and let's just identify a couple of things. R remember that, that Magomedov, he was, he was 8,800 before they gave him a replacement fighter. And the reason why you see him with such a high projection, why he's so highly owned at 50% is because, you know, yeah, it, with, with the new fighter, he should be priced at about 9,400 because now he's about a five to one favorite. So we just left with this kind of theoretical lock here. Now that doesn't mean that we're necessarily going to play him all that much because like you said, like I said, he's going to be about 50% owned here. Um, let's look at these ownerships, see if they make some sense before we kind of get going. Shara 50. I think he's going to be the pop, most popular fighter. That makes sense. Then Pavlovich, Whitaker. Yeah, I think this is all pretty reasonable. Okay, so what do we have here? All right. We built 5,000 lineups, and the rest of this exercise today is going to figure out which of those 5,000 lineups are going to make it into our 150 lineup set. Okay, We're going to presume that, that we don't need any more than the 5,000. Okay? And when you have a, a whatchamacallit, a... Uh, an 11 fight card, I think that that's a reasonable presumption. The other thing I would mention is that I did put in the lineup rules um, to 
not use opposing fighters. Um, and listen, if it's an 11 fight card, you could certainly, it, it's certainly more likely that a stack wins as opposed to a 14 fight card, but still it's very, very difficult for a, a fight stack to win, uh, uh, to, to hit the optimal. So I, I am, although I should say that making the rule to not allow it doesn't make a lot of sense because the idea is that if you're running these Sims and you're running, you know, all this stuff, if you get to the fight stack, you should keep it. You know what I mean? Like you shouldn't exit out. The reality is you should probably not get to it anyway. So you probably should just rerun these. If you want to know the truth without the, without that restriction. Um, now, what are we looking at here? This is, I, I, I really like that this is where Saberism starts because it says this MMA default, and we've talked about this every week, MMA default setting on Saberism is literally the most aggressive setting that you can have, okay? And when you get into the, the weeds here about what it is, again, I'm going to do this every week. You click on the eyeball and, and you see the formula to calculate MMA defaults is, well, you factor in the projection, 0.5 sum of the projection, but then you're adding the half of the 99th percentile um, outcome of the lineup, which is a huge, huge presumption. You know, you are really only playing for that right side of the distribution curve. Um, and then you subtract 0.3 times the sum of the adjusted ownership. So this is super duper aggressive, okay? Um, so what you could do, I mean, if you were just stone psycho and the 11 fight card is just roll with the MMA default settings, um, in fact, just understand that it's the highest upside and and the probably the most unique lineup build that you can create and also probably the least likely to actually win. Um, but you know that you're at least taking it from the top 5,000, um, lineups. So at least it's something, but what I've done is I've created a separate, and you could do this too, a separate metric and I call it sheets default, but you could create your own. And, and what this does, I basically copied and pasted the same MMA default formula, except instead of making the 99th percentile of lineups, I made it the 95th, just made it a little bit more tenable. So my, my question is, is always going to be, okay, how many lineups of this MMA default am I going to roll with? Okay. Um, I'm always going to play some and uh, I don't ever really know what the best way to approach it is. Okay. Um, but we're, we're going to get back to that. We're going to get back to that. The, the, the next thing to, to, to look at is this MMA Sim Diversity 10 setting. Okay. Um, and this setting is more, the more traditional setting um, for Saberson. Like when you get into this eyeball, it it's oh it's a hundred times the sim optimals plus 0.8 times some of the projections. It does not take the 99th percentile outcomes. It's the sim optimals. And it's only dinging ownership by 0.2 times average ownership as opposed to 0.3. So it is aggressive, but it's certainly not as aggressive as MMA default. And the other thing is that uh this does a pretty poor job of of uh of avoiding dupes so if you did roll with the sim diversity 10 rankings sim diversity 10 settings you're getting probably the most likely lineups to hit the optimal um but so many of these lineups are going to be so mega duped that you're going to have to do something different than just this okay um the next thing i want to kind of put in is the is the contest sims and we already saved the settings here and the question is what um what field of lineups are we going to compare our lineups to so you could use the flagship mme um set which is what 
Sabersim kind of recommends, or one you could do, there's a lot of things you could do, okay? But for the purposes of this video, the other thing that you can do is, is you run it against your 5,000 lives that you just built, okay? So essentially, when you, when you, have faith in your projections and and the fact that Saberson is going to build like a reasonable field of lineups for you, then um, then you could use that field. Um, for the purposes of this video, I think I'm gonna. Well, we could do both if you want to know the truth, but it's the same thing. All right, so so let's so let's it's the same process at least. So we would go to flagship MME. And then we'd run the contest sim here. Let's finish. It's like it's it's like it's uh stalling on me a little bit. Nope, here it is. And then you would hit this drop down and you would get these kind of sim lineups. Now, again, these lineups also similar to the um similar to the sim diversity 10, they do lack uniqueness, in my opinion. Um, it's just way too much of the good plays, for lack of a better description. So again, this is also going to be, I think this is probably going to do a little better as far as getting unique than the than the con than the than the regular you know Cinder C ten because you know you're um comparing your lineups to it to the field and, and you know you're presuming that that you know what the other people are going to play. So this does a little bit better as far as that that's concerned. So in order before we start messing with um with like leaving salary on the table or whatever the 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 progression of of aggression so to speak is 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 the most aggressive is going to be that MMA default that sheets default setting second most aggressive is going to be that um contest sim stuff or whatever the contest sims that we ran and then third is going to be the regular sim diversity 10 um the other thing that you could do if you want to get a little bit more unique is to literally force in low ownership. And to do that, you have to do some geo mean filtering. And it's very, very difficult to get unique in this way, but but I'm gonna show you anyway. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to add this filter and we are going to only play lineups that have a geo mean of a certain amount. And to figure out what that is, we need to know how many people there are on the how many entrants there are on the contest. So thirty one thousand three seventy two. So we do pull up our our uh, our geo mean calculator here, and for thirty one three seventy two, you know, if you wanted to limit, limit your dupes to say five. You have an M you have a geo mean of 23.2. So that's what you would put in this filter. So you hit filter, add filter, um, geo mean, less than, and then less than 23.2. And so now it's it's re-ranking and we're only getting the lineups that have a geo mean of less than 23.2. Um the, the the um the level of aggression as far as this is concerned i think is sort of on par with the mma default setting the only thing i would say though is that when you're forcing in like a a, a geo mean of a certain ilk or, or or a maximum the way the multiplication works the uh the really really low owned fighters get really steamed in this type of setup um, so just kind of keep that in mind. You'll end up getting like, for example, probably a decent amount of Antron Tricoli without even looking. Um, but this is again, another 
it, we're pulling from the 5,000 lineups. So that's good. Okay. So I would put this one probably a little, I guess, below the sheets default, but ahead of the contest sims and, and, the, and the, and the saber sim, uh, the regular, um, crap, the, uh, Sim University 10. So, so what else can you do? I mean, you could certainly build a good 150 piece out of out of all those different settings. Um, I mean, I wouldn't mind playing, say, 50 lineups from MMA default, Sheets default, 50 lineups through um uh geo mean of less than 20, 22.3 or whatever I said. And it's possible that I might want to play some of the sim, some of the sim lineups just to kind of give myself a chance to win. But but I'm not too interested in giving myself a chance to win. I, I want to win all of it. Okay. So we have. I want to go into the next, the last way you can maybe get different, and that would be um, by intentionally leaving money on the table. the 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 issue with that in this particular card, I mean, there's so many good options at like 88 8900 or whatever that i mean if you leave too much money on the table you are giving up just a ton in projections you know it's not like one of those cards where you have a whole bunch of awesome underdogs that are um that have extreme upside um so that that's going to be the issue with leaving money on the table and so as far as like how much, see, so here's the problem. Normally I would say something like, well, you know what you can do with, um, with, uh, say Ali Scarra, who's 7,600. I mean, in his wins, I, I presume he's going to score just as much, if not more than Whitaker. So why don't I just play him and leave a thousand on the table? Like what, what that'll end up doing is, is, is kind of tricking the optimizers in that uh, normally if you had 8,600 left, you would play Whitaker, okay? But because we're going to play Ali Skaroff, you're we're going to have extra leverage over those lineups, okay? Because we're intentionally not playing Whitaker when we otherwise ha had the money to do it. That's what leaving the thousand on the table does in these kind of underdog situations. But the problem on this type of slate with that is that to leave a thousand on the table means you're, you're probably playing a 7,800 or 7,700 or 7,900 guy in the rest of your lineup and not getting to like Pavlovich and, um, and Magomedov and whatever. So yeah, I mean, you're, 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 you're kind of okay in those non winner in those, uh, Ali scare off lineups because you're, getting a little leverage over the lineups that have what's his name instead, but you're giving up just so much in, in, in projection that it's, it's, I, I probably think it's inadvisable to leave that much, but you can leave something, you know? So I think that of these 8,400s, like this guy's uh, Whitaker is going to project pretty well. The question is, do we want to leave a thousand on the table with Walker, for example? Well, that we don't really need to. So what underdog like is is somebody we want to play, but projects a little bit lower than his opponent? See, not the Zhao Long one is bad. Okay. This one is bad. The there's really no amount of money I really feel like leaving on the table here. So actually, Ali Skarov, 7,800 to 8,400 to so leave 600 on the table. See, again, what, 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 what ends up happening then is that I end up with too many lineups with, say, Namov instead of Pavlovich, or Namov instead of Magomedov, or Namov instead of, you know, some of these 9K. So I don't think leaving money on the table by by on purpose 
is is the idea. So so we're gonna not gonna do that on this card. So now we're back to you know what what amount of the fifty MMA defaults and what amount of the fifty you know uh uh what amount of the geo mean stuff are we gonna play? You know before before I say that. I, I wonder if it's worth playing some from the regular contest sims and leave just something on the table. I mean, I know we're giving up something, but is there a real difference between like the ceiling of, I don't know, um, Magomedov, Pavlovich, or, or Magomedov? I mean, not really that much, right? So, or Fakradinov. So, Maybe we could what we could do is leave this type of money on the table. Leave leave what it would take to get from Pavlovich up to Magomed. So you want to try to leave 600 on the table in some lineups. You know, we'll leave 600 on the table in these regular, we'll get back to Jim Mean in a minute. In those regular uh contest sim based um lineups. It fe it feels fishy to do that. Um, so I think we're just going to opt on this particular card with these ridiculous MMA default settings where we completely prioritize the right part of the distribution curve and also just forcing in the geo mean stuff. But let let's let's run how many are we gonna run? If we did 50 geo mean stuff and 50 um what's the word I'm looking for? 50 geo mean stuff, 50 geo mean lineups and 50 uh sheets default setting lineups, you'll have 50 left, and then maybe I'll do 50 lineups with like I said, from the regular sim file, but just leaving 600 on the table. I think that's I think that's reasonable. So let's uh but let's make sure that we don't we don't over we don't play the same lineup twice. Okay. So like for example, here is the the geo mean set that we made already. The first question is is do we want to do min uniques more than one? And I the problem is, is that is that you're already sacrificing so much in projection to get down to these guys that um, that um, you're sacrificing so much in projection to get to get down to these guys that I don't think this is a really good idea. Okay, um, so let let's let's start with. 50 lineups, geo mean filtered. So that's what I said. We don't, I don't need to go min uniques too. So we'll go 50 lineups in the, and we've done geo mean filtering here. Okay. And we started from the Sims and then we, we, we went geo mean filtering there. So let's save these and we're going to save these to this file. Actually, these are the, you know what these are? These are the, the geo mean lineup. So I'm going to, cut and paste those in my dupe calculator or my dupe macro, which I um which I've shown you guys before. And you can use the favorites column. There's other things you can do with this, but you know, but I like the way mine works. Is I'll put 50 lineups, these 50 that I just made in here, and we'll kind of keep those for safekeeping for now. And then I want to go back to those um MMA default lineups. Uh, not MMA default, the sheets default lineups. Okay. Um, and we'll use 50 of those and we will save these as well. So we will cut here and paste those as well into this dupe calculator. So what we've done is we've done 50 lineups with the MMA uh, with the sheets default setting and 50 lineups with the um with the uh, geo mean filtering. Let's just see, let's just make sure there's no overlap between those. So this this macro will fat will will factor those out 
and let's just see. So yeah, so there are eight lineups that appeared in both. Um, so it removed the dupes part of those. And so now we have 93 lineups so far that have a lot, you know, that have a lot of aggression to them. So what we could do is build the remaining 57 lineups out of the that leaving money on the table stuff. So you know what? Feels it feels a little fishy, but we're gonna do it anyway, just, just to show you. So again, we'll go back to um not sim diversity 10, the uh the throwdown, the sims, and then we'll just sort this by salary, or we'll do a filter by salary. Mm. Less than forty nine thousand five hundred. Yeah, and we will then. We don't need. We actually need more than this. We need fifty seven. So we'll put fifty seven lineups, and then what we're going to do. Save these to CSV. And we'll put those 57 in here. Now let's see what we have. I bet you there's no dupes. Let's take a look. Um, yeah, so we do now have 150 completely unique lineups. We're missing one. Um, all right, we'll we'll live with that. Um and all we'll do is we'll take these lineups and we'll put them in our DraftKings and we should be good. Um, now, again, you, you'll note, <laughs> I know you guys are going to think I'm, I'm nuts, but you note that I never really even showed how much, what percent of anybody we, we got um, because quite frankly, I, I, I literally don't care. Um, if you're really a believer in process, you'll you'll believe in your process and not worry about who you actually have as a result. Um, because if you do, then then you're not then you're being biased about your process. And, uh, and I, I think about this a lot. You know, I, this idea of, ooh, I, I, do these lives look normal? Well, if if if, if that's the question you have to ask then what faith do you really have in, in, in your back end? You know, so I don't know. Uh, I did not build my lines for the big buy-ins yet. For now, I'm just going to cut and paste these top ones. But, I mean, the big buy-ins are pretty, I mean, want to remind ourselves of who the good plays are? Okay, fine. Uh, well, first, let's save these lineups. I mean, Pavlovich is a good play. You needed me to tell you that? Magomed, uh, Shara, whatever. That's a good play. That, um, you know, that, that wrestler in the first fight, King, whatever, he, uh, the 7,900 guy, he's a good play. You could, that Johnny Walker fight, you could target both sides of that. Um, main event, could do without it, if you want to know the truth. Ali Scarrow is the better side of that for DFS purposes. And the 90 and the 9300 hour guy. I mean, he's got a huge inside the distance line. As far as underdogs, I mean, Volkov, good underdog. Ali Scarrow, excellent underdog. That guy, the, the wrestler, 7900. So I don't think you need to go down into the 6Ks or anything like that. You know, you don't need to play Nicholas Dalby for all that much money. I don't think. Um, so that's pretty much it, you know, I, and, and you're, you're, you know, you're seeing the exact process that I'm, that I'm using and that's, uh, it's pretty much all I'm doing. All right. So that will do it. I hope you guys win the hundred thousand and, uh, good luck.